Welcome to this daily service. Thank you for joining us. And our prayer is that this time we spend together will enable us to walk with God today. Let's begin by saying these words from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This Easter week, we're looking at passages from Mark's gospel as Jesus heads towards the cross. And our story for today comes from Mark chapter 10. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That final verse, verse 45, is the key verse. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. James and John want to be served. They know that Jesus is God's King, and so they want him to guarantee them glory, for him to give them the success and the status and the security that they want. But Jesus graciously but firmly tells them, you don't know what you are asking for. Now we may not be as blunt as James and John, but there are times when we come to Jesus and we want him to guarantee what we want. But hasn't this past year caused us to reassess our ambitions? All that success and status and security that have been connected to our jobs, our, our studies, our finances, or our health. They've all been shaken. And even if we haven't lost much, what we do have, we hold on to tightly. But Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve us. Not by giving us what we want, but what we need. James and John had missed the point. They didn't realise that they were slaves to their pride, to their selfish ambition, to the power and glory that they wanted for themselves. What they needed was to be set free from their sin and God's judgment on it. And that's what we need too. And wonderfully, that's exactly why Jesus came. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. $18 million is the highest ransom price paid for one person. It was paid for Freddy Heineken, the owner and CEO of Heineken Beer, who was kidnapped by a gang back in November 1983, and only released after his family had paid the full amount. Jesus didn't pay money for us, but he served us by giving his life. He suffered and died on the cross to set us free from our sins. 
Our God is the servant king. And that's wonderful news. And yet it's also challenging. Because walking with Jesus, as he walks to the cross, means admitting that we need him to serve us. That the first step to greatness is not praying for success and security and status, but admitting we're slaves. Of coming to Jesus and asking him, Lord, please forgive my sins. Please set me free. Please enable me to live for you. Not please bless my ambitions and plans, but please liberate me. And when we do that for the first or the 100th time, Jesus does serve us and he does set us free so that we can serve others. Whoever wants to become great among you must be slave of all. Today holds lots of opportunities for us to serve and in a whole variety of different ways. And we can only do so because Jesus has first served us. Not because we have something to give or because if we try really hard we can do it or so we feel important and significant. All that we have comes from Jesus. We can serve in the grace which he supplies with the new ambitions that he gives us to follow his example as the servant king. As we pray now, let's begin our prayers by confessing our sins together. Lord, we have sinned. We have turned away from you and disobeyed you. We lift up our voice to you and cry for your mercy. There is no one else to whom we can go. Please save us from our sins and from the temptations that seem too strong for us. Please forgive us as you have promised through Jesus' death on the cross and help us to praise you as we should through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment now to consider who we might serve today and how we might serve them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for Christians in every neighbourhood, city and community. May your Holy Spirit inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve, and to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And we pray for all those serving in the health service and police, schools and businesses, local government and transport, and many other sectors of society. Protect and sustain them today. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing of our Redeemer and all that he has done for us.
Please join with me in saying together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>